Everybody out there in TV land, how's it going for y'all? Getting a little stir crazy? Yeah, we know, us too. Really, the only thing keeping us feeling sort of normal has been making these live streams and talking to you. Thank you for tuning in, watching, asking questions, and even just clicking the wave button. It's a comfort to know that you guys are still out there. Being holed up like this is starting to feel almost normal, which probably isn't good. We did get out into the yard a little bit yesterday. That Memphis sunshine sure felt lovely. We mowed and poked around in the garden only to discover that we had missed a couple of ant mounds. So we've held off for one more day to get these sprouts in the ground. I think we're gonna have purple tomatoes this year if the ants don't get them. The marigolds are coming up pretty well and I have a skid of pansies from plant pounding. One of the last workshops we had in the clubhouse before, well, you know, before all this. Anyway, if we can make any headway with these nasty red ants, we should be off to a running start with the veggie garden. But you know, dear friends, you know where there are not any mean, angry red fire ants with a score to settle? That would be right here in this amazing paper flower bouquet. Well, how's that for a transition? Pretty smooth, right? Yeah, so today we're gonna get into some paper flowers. There's about a billion different ways to make them, but this is one that I really think is fun and that you can probably do with what you have in your gift wrapping station. Or if you're not a crazy person like me with a gift wrapping station, maybe just the closet where you keep the wrapping paper, board games, and camping gear. You really should consider having a gift wrapping station though. Maybe the problem is that you're not gifting enough presents. Ha! So to get started with this one, you're gonna need a pair of scissors, some tissue paper, ooh, or if you're not lucky enough to have all these amazing colors, you can still play by using newspapers. Here's one made from newsprint or even magazines like this one. To really spice up the newspaper flowers, you can get after them with some markers, crayons, watercolor, or with adequate ventilation, a respirator, and an okay from your roomie spray paint. I'm joking, but I'm not really joking. You actually can get some really great spray paint color effects with a little practice. With this paper flower technique, you can also make paper crowns. Oh, isn't that pretty for spring? So sweet but we're gonna save that for another episode. So along with the tissue paper and scissors, you're going to need some pipe cleaners like these. Um, you can use uh, metal twist ties from bread wrappers or even just some thin wire if that's what you happen to have. I like using pipe cleaners because when you're making a million of these, the fuzzies really make it easy on your fingers and they're super simple to cut. So this episode is dedicated to our wonderful shop girl, Sarah, who made about a bazillion of these with me last spring for our storefront windows, including this magnificent beast of a sunflower. That's 24 sheets of tissue paper, y'all. Hi, Sarah, we miss you. All right, so to get started, we need to prep that tissue paper. My tissue is 20 by 30 inches. Yours might be a different size, but I'm gonna go ahead, I went ahead and cut that in half so that my final sheets that I'm working with are 15 inches wide and 20 inches long. The next thing you'll wanna do is pick your colors. The size of your flower is gonna depend on how many sheets you, of tissue you decide to use. The more sheets you use, the larger these flowers get. They max out at about 15 inches wide, aka this awesome sunflower, or the width of your tissue paper. I recommend that you start with less sheets of tissue until you get the hang of it. So I'm gonna make my flower, I think, with eight sheets. We're going to go ahead and layer the sheets in the order that we'd like to see our petals. So here's one I made earlier. And I like to start with yellow in the center 
and then those darker colors on the outside. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and you'll see why in a minute, is I'm gonna cut this yellow sheet right in half. I'm gonna cut this yellow sheet right in half, like so. Okay. Now the next color that I'd like to use is green. And then I'm gonna use a piece of navy, kind of make that pop. And that I kind of think of as the stamens of my flower. And then as far as the petals go, I'm gonna mix these up just a little bit. I'm gonna do two light pinks against that blue, two bright pinks, and then this purple on the outside. Sometimes I'll use another sheet of green on the outside. I think that looks real cool, a little bit like how sometimes petals will start to look like leaves. So now what we wanna do is line up all of those sheets. I'm gonna scoot this a little out of the way for this next step. So we're gonna line up these sheets and I try as much as I can to have one side of those sheets nice and tidy. And I'm lining up those corners. I have a couple of pieces that are not quite the same size, but that is no big deal. So once I get them all squared away, I'm going to fold them accordion style. All right, so I'm going to make these folds about an inch. Now you might not be able to see I have this handy cheater on my table that is actually inch by inch grid. So again, oop, trying to keep these nice and tidy. I'm gonna fold that accordion style. Just sort of flipping it back and forth, but trying to keep them nice and tidy. <laughs> that first fold wasn't tidy at all, y'all. But that's all right. It's still gonna come out great. So a one inch fold really is the best. We experimented with a lot of these flowers and you can go a little bit bigger on that fold width, but it's not a great idea to get too much larger. It'll be really hard to pull your petals apart and you'll see in a minute. So again, just back and forth with the folding. Folding back and forth. All right. Hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing there. Just flipping back and forth, back and forth. I'm using my thumb to try and make sure that those folds are all nice and even. That I'm folding in a straight line, but that also when we're done and we look at our cool little accordion that this business is all about the same width. So they're not perfect, but that'll do the job. All right, all folded. I'm just gonna give it a final little crease like so. Now we're gonna open it up and we're gonna create those beautiful petals. Oh, I opened that up really badly. Let's See if we can't salvage it. All right, so now we're gonna open that up and we're gonna cut our beautiful petals. I have a sheet here to show you of all of the different ways that I've come up with to cut those petals. Well, we, Sarah helped quite a bit too. These down here, these first two are ones I really like to use in the center. They're very exciting for the center. And then here's some different ways you can cut the petals. So I'm gonna leave this here as we work to reference. So first we're gonna do this yellow and I'm gonna do these two sheets of yellow together. I'll cut them exactly the same way. I'm just gonna fold them back along their accordion folds. All right, and then I'm gonna fold this in half. We'll wanna know where the center is later. It'll be helpful. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just trim it a little shorter. These are a little bit wonky, 
that's all right. And I think for this guy, I'm gonna do this one here, which is just some little triangles. I'm not cutting these to be super perfect. Um, because I'm just using two layers of tissue, I'm finding it real easy to cut both sides at once, but you don't have to. I'll show you on the next one. So here is my first, whoops, didn't get all the way through. Here is my first layer. So I'm going to lay that here for just a second. Now I'm going to pick my next layer is this green. Now each layer of petals, you want to get a little bit smaller. So we wanna see some difference between the height of the petals. So again, I'm gonna fold that in half. And this is just one sheet. And I wanna make sure that I'm a little bit larger than what, a little bit longer than, than what came before, just like this. And now I'm kind of feeling inspired by the points on that yellow bit to do some points on this one too. So I'm gonna make them, I think a little deeper will be fun. So this time I'm gonna show you, you can cut from one side at a time they do not all need to be exactly the same and it's perfectly perfect. Did y'all hear Frank? Frank says hi. So here we go, I'm gonna use that eh, little kind of template to get them approximate like so. And here we have petal number two. Now we're into this beautiful navy. I'm gonna fold this guy up. And I think we're gonna stick with those pokey petals. Again, I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna check the height with the green because I do want you to see it. I don't want them all to be exactly the same. We're gonna snip a little bit off. And this time, I'm just gonna cut a tall, skinny triangle like so. Now, you'll notice I am trying to keep them in order here that they've been cut. Although you should be able to tell when you're done just by those differing heights. So I'm gonna cut these two pink ones together. Again, folding those accordions up like so. Folding in half. I think this time we're gonna try some curvy petals, kind of separate it from that interior. So for this first one, let's cut it off a little bit so I get my height that I like. And I think I'm gonna do an M shape if I can. These are interior petals, so this will make them look a little smaller. So I got kind of an M. I'm not even gonna try to attempt to trace that. That seems hard. So on this side, I'm just gonna freehand two little loops. You'll see that you really won't see the differences in these. All right. And now I think I'm gonna take one of these dark pinks out gonna edit that and I'm gonna sh I'm gonna cut these two together nope I take it back <laughs> I'm gonna cut them separate but I'm still gonna edit that one out so for this pink one I'm gonna cut a wider round petal because I think that will be pretty again so you can this is a lot easier. See, I'm struggling a little bit to get my folds back together. So the more time you take to make those, that accordion fold nice and tidy, the easier the rest of this will be for you. So since this is just one sheet again, I can go ahead and cut through both layers. If you're cutting more layers at once, 
two or three, you might find you do one side at a time and that's easier. Again, keeping them in the proper order. Now last, we're gonna do this purple petal. And one way that I found to make really wide petals that is easier than trying to make wider folds, which y'all doesn't really work great. Trust me, we made a bazillion flowers, so. All right, all right, so this guy, I'm really not gonna, I'm really gonna trim just like a tiny bit to make it even there. And now I'm gonna cut kind of a half petal shape. So this one is gonna come just around like so. You kind of see the difference. This is a whole petal and that's kind of a half. Now, the tricky bit, and for me especially I can tell because my accordions are kind of wonky, but we're gonna lay these back out in the same order. So two things that can help if you have a little bit hanging out on one end, and I almost always have a little bit that's not a full fold, that can help you line it up. You're gonna wanna check which is the mountain fold and which is the valley fold. So a mountain fold goes this way, mountain fold goes this way, and a valley fold goes the other way. That can help you get them back in the right place. So we just wanna gently lay them out. so that, that those folds are fitting together. If you find that they're not, sometimes these can get away from you when you're laying them down. So if they're not going back together exactly right, you might have to flip your page or flip your page to find which way it goes. But again, I've got this little short edge that's really helping me. So as I'm laying them down, I'm trying to get those folds all lined up and I'm also checking that I have an equidistant amount between each color on each side. So top and bottom both kind of look the same sort of spacing. There we have that blue accent, which I'm pretty excited about. So green. Whoops. Green is next. Let's see, I think that's gonna go that way. All right, is that right? Yep, so you do wanna check that you're getting everything in the right place. You can always crease those again to sort of force it, but there we go, I think that's right. And again, kind of checking how those are laying that they're even. Ooh, here's the last one. All right, and this guy. I think it's gonna go this way. Maybe. He got a little off, didn't he? <laughs> it's a terrible puzzle, y'all. See, I think he goes like this. Close enough. So now we're gonna fold it up. I love this part. You kind of get to start to see how your bits are gonna go together. Sort of tucking. Yeah, that yellow piece wasn't quite right, but it's all gonna come out in the wash. So I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner. We're gonna wrap that around. Another cool thing about pipe cleaners is you're gonna be able to use pipe cleaner to string it up. And don't worry about what color you have, you actually are not going to see them when you're done. Now we're gonna start to open. Ooh, look at those pretty colors. Already that looks so amazing, right? So this next part, we're just gonna peel back those layers nice and gently. So the first couple in the center are gonna be the hardest. Want to make sure you're working right side up, you know, so you're peeling from the front. Um, and the first couple of layers are going to be a little fussier than the rest, but just, just go slow and be gentle. So I slide my finger under the tissue paper until I find the center of that mountain fold. 
and kind of pull that up into the center of each of those little folded areas. So nice and gentle, and I'm grabbing just one of those two layers of tissue, yellow tissue at a time. When I get to the edge, that one's gonna be kind of easy, just pull it up. So now we're gonna keep going. Again, I'm gonna slide my finger under that top layer of tissue, kind of loosen it up, go down into that fold and pull it towards the center. Now these first ones you might especially find challenging and you might get some little tearing as you're, as you're pulling, but you know what, don't worry because you really can't, when you're done, you really can't see it. So again, finding that center, there's one that tore a little bit, no biggie, and digging down into that little crevice and pulling it up. So we're gonna just keep going like so till we get to the end of the yellow. Now, every time I complete a layer, I like to just go through and fluff them and kind of pull them as tall as they can be. Make sure that I've pulled back along that crease as much as I can. I'm opening the flower as much as I can at this point. As you work your layers, it's tough to come back and open them more. So you'll see I brought that all the way back. All right, so now I'm gonna to come to this next bit of yellow. Doesn't really matter where you start. And again, this one's gonna, it's gonna to start to go easier, y'all, after that first one. So you're grabbing from the center and just kind of pulling up. And now that the next color is green, it's also a lot easier to see when you're separating the tissue. So if you're having trouble, if that's something that's hard for you to separate the tissue, go ahead and make each, each layer a different color. All right, so we're just gonna keep coming around. We're just gonna keep coming around. Let me get that closer to you so you can actually see what's happening. So now I have this beautiful, beautiful yellow. I love this color, it's so bright and cheery. So again, I'm just kind of checking that everything is kind of pulled up as far as it can be before I move on to the next layer. So here's our green. Oh, that was a great choice. I really love that pop. So I did just get a little bit of a tear there, no biggie. They usually happen right along the fold. You kind of stress them. So, round and round. When you get to where that, where those petals, the halves of your petals meet, I like to pay a little attention there just to make sure that we're kind of covering that up so that the petal layers kind of do this back and forth. And that'll hide your little seam. All right, a little more tearing, going a little faster maybe than I normally would, but that's a demo for you. All right, now we're on to that navy, which I was pretty convinced would give us a nice dramatic change before we get to those beautiful pink petals. And again, I'm at that, when I get to that place where the two halves meet, I'm gonna do a little extra work to make sure I don't see that hole. And that's just shuffling the paper around, y'all. It's not really work. All right, so again, I'm gonna make sure everything's kind of pulled up as much as it can be sort of gently working along those folds, fluff things back out where they're supposed to be, and not looking cool. Oh, love that stage. All right, we're getting there, y'all. So now this light pink, again, is two layers, so I'm gonna carefully separate them. I want nice, a lot of air between my petals. And you'll notice the further out I get, kind of the easier this is. The center of your flower is really the toughest to pull apart. 
So this is kindergarten for grown folks, but again, if you're doing this with little people, getting that center of the flower started, if they're frustrated, can really help. Oops. I could use that help. There we go. Did I tell you about my broken thumb? I feel like I told you last episode. It's mostly healed. But you know what? It really still doesn't like to pinch. All right. Oh, isn't that pretty? So that's all coming up real nice. Two more layers to go. Just make sure I've separated that enough. All right, now we've got our pretty hot pink. And I'm just, this one's a little different. I'm just gonna kind of separate it from the purple. I'm just gonna pull them apart now. Now again, you can make these with as many layers of color as you want. You do reach a certain critical mass where, you know, more is just more and doesn't really look like more, so. I think we maxed out at about 24. Now on the bottom, I'm just gonna kinda give these a little bit of a, a, a tug so that they curve a little bit more like petals. And this is why compared to the magazines and the newsprint, which of course will work, but why I really love the newsprint or the tissue paper, because you really can fuss and shape tissue paper in a way that newsprint doesn't quite do because it's thicker. How about that, y'all? Isn't that gorgeous? Do you love it? I love it. So pretty. All right. So again, let me show you that quick. I've got this template. So some different ways that you can go ahead and make petals. And I'm sure you can come up with a whole bunch of other ways that I didn't even think of to make petals. Um, we're all floofed and fluffed. So now I know some of you might not have tissue paper at home, especially so much in such beautiful colors. So I did make one with magazines. Now this is a magazine that I had laying around in the recycling. Um, and it was the type of magazine that has that saddle stitch in the center or a staple. So I was able to pull it out to get bigger sheets to use. It is a little tougher to work with. Um, and from the little bit I tried, I would suggest that you use less layers. Um, and I think like eight is enough, but it's pretty cool looking. Um, and if you spent a little more time picking color out, for each of your pages than I did. I think you could make that look even cooler. Um, you can also do it with newspaper. Now I use newsprint because we have that on hand. I use it for several workshops here. Um, printed newspaper would also work great. It's, it, might, it might even work better because it, it's a little thinner than this. Um, and it'd be really awesome to have the texture from the articles and the ads and the different colored pages. Um, so using the newsprint was a little bit easier than the magazine pages, but it's still tougher to work with than the tissue paper if you have it. Um, it can be tricky to separate and shape without tearing the paper. Um, again, I would use less layers, five to eight at the most. Um, so when you get the hang of it, when you get a shape that you like, try adding some color with markers or watercolor paints or spray paint. <laughs> All right. So those are tissue paper flowers, y'all. Boy, I really love these things. This process is so calming. And when I'm done cutting all the paper in my house to shreds, I have some fun new decorations for the cats to figure out how to destroy. Thank you so much for watching this, our third social club in exile. It's been great to see all the little red hearts float by. Hi. We miss you guys so much and really can't wait to sit down with you again in our Summer Avenue Clubhouse. We are planning to live stream here on Facebook every other day. So like our page and we can let you know when it's happening because it's totally happening. All right then, from Frank, Ernest, Jolene, Otis, and of course, Michael, 
Love y'all and see you soon.